Hello guys and welcome to your first 3DS Homebrew tutorial. So in these tutorials I'm going to assume you already know how to run Homebrew apps. So I'm going to be teaching you how to actually compile code, C++ code, into a 3DS Homebrew app in this video. So I'm going to assume you already know how to run Homebrew apps from your SD card. Because how you do that is always changing. There are plenty of other videos and tutorials on that. Um, so, assuming you already know how to run homebrew apps from your SD card, uh, um, this tutorial we're going to look at how to compile C++ code to run on your 3DS. So, the first thing you need is DevKit Pro. This is available for like every platform, Windows, FreeBSD, Mac, and Linux. So, install this. This is the homebrew tool chains that actually allow you to compile your C++ code to a 3DS app. And you also need SigWin, however you say this, if you're running Windows. If you're running Linux, you don't need this. But if you're running Windows, you need to install SigWin. Now, assuming you've installed both of those, you also need to make sure your paths is set up. So you're going to open up... Um, you're going to open up your C drive and go to DevKit Pro. Um, you set up paths slightly differently on Linux. Um... If you're using Linux, you probably already know how to do this, but if you're using Windows, you might not. So you go to DevKit Pro, go to uh, DevKit Arm, and go to Ben, and you copy this path right here. These are all the programs used to um, build C++ code. So then you right-click this PC and click Properties, and you go to Advanced System Setting, Environment Variables, and you look for the environment variable called Path, and you click edit, and then what you do is you put a semicolon, and then you paste this path. So see, we get semicolon, um, C, DevKit Pro, arm, DevKit Arm, Ben. That will add it to the path if it's not already part of your uh, path. And so I think mine is already listed here, so I don't actually need to add it, so I want to hit cancel. But you would hit OK, and then you would hit OK again, and then OK again. But I'm hitting Cancel, because I already have it set up. So that, that's how you set up your environment variable. And there's also another thing. Um, inside your DevKit Pro folder, which I'm pretty sure this is located in your home directory on Linux, um, you go to Examples, then you go to 3DS, then you go to um, Graphics, then you go to printing, then you go to Hello World, and you copy Hello World to the desktop. Now, the good thing about Hello World here is it essentially is an environment for, um, essentially has our whole build environment here. So we got a nice make file and a source file. And when we compile our code, whatever it compiles to, whatever name the app is that it compiles to is the name of the folder. So if we want to make a new app using this build environment, we just got to copy the folder and rename it to the name of our new app, such as Bob. And so now here we can start developing our Bob app. So what do I mean by there's like a, this already has a little build environment? Because the, the thing is mainly here is the make file. So if I set start CMD, CD desktop, CD hello world, this make file if I just type the word make, it will do all, um, everything that needs to be done to compile the code. So this, see this hello world.3dsx and hello world.smdh? That's our, our compiled homebrew files. So I didn't need, so as you can see when I type in make, it put in this long command for me because the make file already specifies everything needed to build the program. So this make file handles all that for us. So all we need to do is edit the source code. And if we want to change the name of the compiled um, program, we just need to change the name of the folder. Um, so this compile. So after we typed in make, if make didn't work for you, that means you didn't install um, SigWin properly, um, or you didn't install DevKit Pro properly. Um, so make should work. And when you type make and you get these files, hello.3dsx and hello.smbh, I want to cut these and go to my SD card, my 3DS folder, and paste them in. And now I can actually load my 3DS, load the homebrew launcher, and I can actually run Hello World, the program. So 
all we got to do to compile our code, every time we want to compile it, we just need to type the word make and it will compile it. That's what's good about this. It's a little build environment here, so we don't actually got to remember all the commands to compile our code. We just need to type the word make and it compiles our code. So this is the Hello World code itself. I'm going to open with Notepad++. Um, yes, okay, so... How does this Hello World code work? It's actually very simple. So the first thing we do is include um, the library. So we ha always have to include the 3ds.h library. There's no, there's no instance where you wouldn't include that. That is that's essentially essential. Um, so then stdio. This is the standard input output library. Um, if you've ever coded C++ before, this a lot of this looks familiar, like printf. Printf's actually what prints the text of the screen. Now, this part might look weird to you. Um, this specifies, this is an escape code. Um, this, ex, this specifies the position in the screen it wants to write the text to. So that's the 15th column in the 19th row. So, or I mean, that's the 15th row in the 19th column. So, um... This, you, if you've coded in Linux before, you would have used something like this, because Linux does sort of the same thing. But if you've coded only C++ and Windows, you might have never seen that before. But that's all that does. You can put these little um, escape codes in the string to modify something about the text. And in this case, this modifies where the text appears on the screen. So it says, hello world, then press start to exit. Press start to exit should appear about at the bottom center of the screen while um, Hello World appears about in the center of the screen. So anytime you're using anything with graphics, you need to um, use graphics initialize default. Um, then this initializes, this says you're going to be using a console. You need to initialize a console on the top screen. And there's actually three screens on the 3DS. There's the top left, the top right, and the bottom. But when you're using the console, you just need to worry about the top screen as one screen, even though it's technically two screens because of the right eye and the left eye. You just treat it as one screen when you're using the console. Um, and here's our main loop. You always need a main loop because if you don't have a main loop, the program will it'll display like Hello World and immediately exit. So you need a main loop to keep it from not immediately exiting. Um, so the main loop... Uh, you need app main loop because that updates the app every loop. Um, you, the first thing you need if you're going to scan for a uh, key press, you need head scan input, which will just update all the... Um, it will just look at all the inputs and update all based on what inputs are pressed or released. Um, then U, U32 K down equals head keys down. This will actually get a value representing what keys are being pressed. And then we have if k down ampersand key start break. So if you press the start key then break. Now we do the we use the ampersand instead of um we use the ampersand instead of equals equals because let's say key start equals one. I'm pretty sure it doesn't actually equal one, but let's say that's true. K start equals one. Let's say K select equals one zero. Um, if you're pressing K start, so if you're pressing, um, if you're pressing start, then K down would be equal to one. Now, if you're pressing select, then K down would be equal to um, one zero. So these are binary values. Um, so then what happens if you're pressing K, what if you're pressing start and select, what would happen? Well, K down would actually be equal to 11, to 1, 1. So in decimal, this would be 1, 2, and this would be 3. So, because those are binary values. So why would it be equal to 11? Because essentially, it uses a single bit to represent what key is pressed so and it just adds them together so if you have k down plus um or if you have start plus select that's going to be equal to one one so what happens when you use um 
what happens if you were to say what if k down equals equals um, 1, then yes, if you're pressing just start, it's going to be equal to 1. But if you're pressing start and select, it's not equal to 1. So you can't use equals equals because equals equals will just check if only the start key is pressed down. If you press any other key down with the start key, it won't count. So the ampersand start key start will check if just the bit that represents K down is flipped. Then it will work. So you can press other... So if you're holding down the left key, um, if you're holding down L or R, or maybe you're held in on the X or Y key, and you press start, it will still work. But if you use the equals equals, it will only check if K down is only start, so there's no other keys being pressed. So you want the ampersand if you're going to be doing, uh, if you want multiple keys with start to be allowed. And so all that does is break the loop, and when you break the loop, we call graphics exit, and then we return zero. So that ends our program. So anytime you use graphics, you got to initialize it up here, and then you got to um, exit it down here. So now what does this do? Uh, flush and swap frame buffers. Uh, the graphics are double buffered. So double buffer just means you, have to, you actually write to two buffers. This just prevents the graphics from flickering. So first, let's say we'll be writing to this buffer. And the actual buffer being displayed on the screen is this buffer. So when you write to this buffer, you actually don't see any of the changes. However, when we're done writing to this buffer, we swap the buffers. So we say now display this buffer, and then in the next loop, we're going to write to this buffer. So now when we're done writing to this buffer, we swap the buffers again, and we're going to display this buffer, and then we're going to start writing to that buffer. So the idea here is that we're always writing to a buffer that's not being displayed. So we'll be writing to this buffer while this one's being displayed. And then when we're done, we swap the buffers being displayed. And so we don't see the screen, but we don't actually see the screen being updated as we're writing to it. We write to a hidden buffer, and then we immediately switch the displayed buffer. So it immediately switches to display the buffer we just wrote, and that prevents flickering. So if you just Google double buffer graphics, you'll understand why we do the swap buffer like this. And then we got to wait for vblank. This is important too. To, um, it, uh, it syncs the uh, graphics up to one f uh, a vertical frame. Um, this is this is a bit hard to explain. You can look. I'll link a, 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 the wiki page to this too. But you essentially need this at the end of your uh, right after you swap your buffers. You need this, and so that's about it. So this is how we can print to the. Uh, we can print to the um, screen uh, our help. This is our simple hello world code, basically. So it's the basic graphics for uh, the console, how to write and how to print that to the screen, and how to compile it, and how to actually run it on the 3DS.